So let's get into Obama's speech. Let's get into Obama's speech. I watched the whole thing, top to bottom. I watched the whole thing. Um, and it's fine. You know, it's it's an Obama speech. <laughs> you know, it's just like liberals are fucking fawning over it. They're like, it's the greatest speech we've ever seen. Nobody's ever had a greater speech. In the, Like, really? No, Malcolm X. Bobby Newton, Fred Hampton, MLK. Nobody's had a better speech than him. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Joaquin Phoenix had a more emotional speech at, at, you know, whatever award ceremony he was at. Golden Globes, something? Yeah. I've literally seen rappers have more of an emotional speech than the speech that Obama did at the DNC. Like, the fuck are you talking? It's just the most. It was so stirring and emotional, and what a plea! It's just like I was not convinced to vote for the Democratic Party at all after his speech. If that was the goal of the of of Obama's speech to begin with, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I just know too much about you know this duopoly, and I'm just like I don't. I like what do I do with this? So whenever I watch this and have people and people just go, he's so brave and strong to come out and talk shit on Donald Trump as the president. It's just like, okay. So, so he basically did the same thing that late night television comedians have been doing for four years, but like less funny. <laughs> That's what he did. Open my comics have been talking shit on Donald Trump for four years. But, again, Obama's speech arguably, maybe, was less funny. You could make an argument that Obama's speech was actually funnier than Open Mic Comics, but there was no emotion. There, This wasn't, like, a stirring speech. It was a standard, typical Obama speech. It, it kind of felt like he was giving, like, a graduation speech. So, the beginning at the top of it, he talks about what a president should be, right? He talks about what a president should be, that they're the custodian of democracy, and they're there to protect and preserve and defend the freedoms of all of the, all of the people, including the people that have fought and died to protect, preserve, and defend our freedoms, and this is coming from a man who invoked the Espionage Act more than any president in modern history, who waged a unending war on whistleblowers, people that are defending the country by pointing out government atrocities, by pointing out government misdeeds, exiled a person like Edward Snowden, in Russia to build some bullshit narrative of McCarthyism. Demonized someone like Julian Assange who pointed out war crimes. Then put Chelsea Manning in jail and only commuted her sentence because pardoning her would have been a sign to the elites that he's no longer on their side. Would have been a sign to the Uh, military industrial complex that he's no longer on their side and he needs to have these people on their side that's that's who that's who he's defending about the DAPL protesters under Obama the DAPL protesters were attacked by the militarized police using water and sound cannons That was all under his administration. These are people protecting their their freedoms. They're, these are people protecting their uh, their their constitutional rights, ensuring that those rights are defended. He didn't do anything for them. He just kind of let that shit happen. In fact, in certain cases, especially the whistleblowers, he went out of his way, out of his way, to attack them. 
So you weren't the custodian of democracy when you were a president, but you're holding somebody else to that standard, a standard that you you were setting but not living up to, and then not accepting that you live up to. That doesn't seem fair. So then he goes on to criticize Trump, right? He criticized Trump for helping himself uh, and enriching other people around him. And this is coming from the man who let Citibank pick his cabinet and then got half a million dollars to go speak at these banks when he left office. That's what he did. 2017, 2018, he got paid $600,000 to go speak at Wall Street, at Goldman Sachs, at Citibank, at J.P. Morgan Chase. Why would you do that? Why would you get money from them if you were championing for the people? Oh, is it because you bailed them out in 08 and this is how they're going to reward you for it? Oh, and then he talks about how the top take more, right? Like, he talks about income inequality, how there, there's a, 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 a um, uh, uh, top-heavy distribution of wealth. It's like, yeah, that was happening under you too, dude. Wait, do you, do you just think, like, in 2016, all of a sudden we started giving billionaires... A, like a bunch of breaks. Did you not pay attention to anything fucking Bernie Sanders was saying during during his campaign in 2015? Tax breaks to billionaires have been going on for a very long time. I've addressed this in my show, uh, and I've addressed this at, like if you come see me perform at Fringe. Uh, or, or something along those lines. Um, you know, I uh, I have addressed this exact thing uh, where billionaires have increased their wealth by 1,100% since 1980. 1,100%. Collectively, not, not just each individual. Like, collectively... Uh, Billionaires, a small group of people, have made 1,100 times more money since 1980. And that means that that just didn't happen overnight in, in 2016. Like, it wasn't like November 9th, 2016. It was just like billionaires just got a shit ton more money. It happened because you fucking bail out banks. It happens because you let the uh, insurance companies determine what health care should be. It happens because Jeff Bezos gets to legally hide his money wherever the fuck he wants and gets tax breaks for doing so. It happens because they don't pay their fucking employees properly. And you didn't raise minimum wage under your administration. You didn't talk about uh, improving conditions for people that, that lose their jobs. You didn't put financial protections in place. You didn't put any safety nets you can sit there and say, oh, well, Republicans, 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 but Trump has gotten a bunch of shit done with Democratic opposition. How does that not show that the Democrats are just kind of fucking spineless? They're not the resistance. And the only people that are within the Democratic Party speaking out against the military industrial complex, speaking out for Medicare for all, for a universal basic income, to treat people that have lost their jobs, unfortunately, with dignity and with respect, they get shunned out. Look at the way per, like Pramila Jaipal is treated. Or look at the way Bernie was treated. Look at the way AOC is talked about. Even though AOC toes the line, the squad... Tulsi Gabbard, look what happened to her. So after he criticizes Trump, Obama starts talking about Biden, right? Calls him, he calls him a friend. Does the, he does the Bernie Sanders thing. My friend Joe Biden, look, here's what my friend Joe Biden doesn't know. Here's what my, my, my friend Joe Biden, 
Uh, Bernie did that a whole bunch. That's what Obama did. He did the whole my friend Joe Biden thing. And then he calls him a brother. Just like, what? <laughs> All right. That's fine, I guess. You do know your brother put a bunch of black people in prison, right? Create, he was the architect behind the prison industrial complex, the modern prison industrial complex. That's your brother putting people that look like you in prison more than people that look like him for the same crimes. Dude, if I had a brother that was the architect behind the modern prison industrial complex, I'd be fucking pissed. I, I would I would probably come very close to like disowning that person or at least be like you you have something to atone for and if you're unwilling to atone for it which Joe Biden isn't because every time you bring up his record he kind of freaks the fuck out uh, and starts yelling and says crazy shit like the NAACP has endorsed him when the NAACP doesn't endorse political candidates um, I would probably be like if you don't atone for it then I like I don't think we can be family anymore like we can be family but we're not gonna be family you know what I mean calls him reliable he has he has reliance like he's he's he can rely on Joe which sure I mean I guess if you're gonna bail out banks who else are you gonna go to says he has a lot of empathy just just like are you just not watching fucking Joe Biden talk to people Anytime his record's brought up, anytime his mental health is brought up, he loses his shit. It's like, yeah, bro, I think people are trying to fucking help you. Do you guys remember when Donald Trump didn't want to take a fucking mental exam? How is Joe Biden yelling at the press about his mental health than forgetting words any different than that? I remember, I believe it was 2018, I think it was in Philadelphia when this happened, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine when I did the a Fringe Festival there. Maybe it, was, maybe it was late 2017. And we had this conversation about him taking a, uh, a test, right? The, the psychological test to see if he's mentally fit for the job. Remember that conversation being part of the, part of the dialogue. And, you know, my friend who is in the uh, therapy world said that because he has a personality disorder, it's very difficult to uh, figure that information out. And it made sense. And it made sense, right? It made total sense. And, uh, and I, I mean, every liberal was just like making fun of him for not taking this test. They chastised him for not taking this test. With Joe Biden, it's the exact opposite. It becomes this major, like, viral thing that he freaks out about his mental health. And then every liberal is like, shh, 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 don't bring, how are we not going to bring it up? The dude forgets words. The dude says random shit. The dude loses his train of thought all the time. But again, people just sit there and go, well, we're not voting for Joe. We're voting for fucking Kamala Harris, who's just as bad as Joe Biden in her record. She has an opportunity to atone for those things, but my my wager is that she won't. My wager is because who I know who her donors are, which is Hillary Clinton, and I know that she's tied with Biden, another top-tier Democrat. She ain't going to atone for shit. Oh, we're voting for Supreme Court justices. You mean the justices that have never done anything real about women's cho- uh, like being pro-choice, women's health care choices? Roe versus Wade is a privacy issue, and it's relegated down to states. That's what liberals do. And we saw what happens when you leave things down to the states. Last year, how many states put archaic abortion bills in place? And if you really want to vote for the Supreme Court, if you really want to vote for the vice president, uh, vice presidential pick, then we should, right? Like that should be a part of uh, 
denominating process. That should be part of the electoral process. Who do we think is going to pair with, you know, who or whatever? Like, if the if the fucking election process is going to be this two year fucking reality TV show, you know, that we do every time there's a president. Yeah, then we should elect a vice president, and we should elect a president, and we should elect Supreme Court justices, and they should all campaign for it, just like everything else that everybody else does. Then it makes sense that this is a two-year-long process that leads to, you know, essentially the season finale of the campaigning process. Said he made him a better president. That's what that's what Barack Obama said. He made him a better president, uh, and he respects and cherishes Joe. He was always the last one to leave, and he took his advice. You know, when he was stuck on a problem. That's what Barack Obama said about Joe Biden. And here's the thing. That is kind of a crock of shit. And here's why. It's kind of a crock of shit. Uh, because in 2019, Obama didn't come out and just insure, endorse Joe Biden. He didn't come out and endorse anybody. He he talked to a bunch of people, right? Uh, there were um, he he had like an open conference invitation or some shit like that, where you could go and get advice from Obama about the presidential campaign, and a bunch of people did because at the end of the day they knew that as it got closer to things like Super Tuesday uh, or Iowa, uh, a major bump putting his finger on the scale, so to speak, if Obama did that for any of those candidates, uh, that's it. The deal is sealed. Their their numbers are probably going to skyrocket much higher than they were before. So uh, Mayor Pete went and met with Obama. Kamala Harris met with Obama. Uh, virtually, I think almost every single Democratic candidate did when then he didn't feel like he needed to meet with Biden because he knew Biden. So uh, Biden felt kind of stumped, you know, stiff about that. Uh, but Bernie didn't meet with Obama. Tulsi Gabbard didn't meet with Obama. Uh, Andrew Yang, Marion Williamson. So basically, like the outsider Democratic candidates didn't meet with Obama. Probably, I mean, I don't think Bloomberg met with Obama, but uh, Bloomberg got in super late in the game and they changed all the rules for him anyway. So, not just that, though. It, he made statements. He made statements about Joe Biden uh, because everybody's like, oh, I bet you're going to endorse Joe Biden because he was your VP. And he was like, no, he's got to earn it. Biden's got to earn my endorsement, just like everybody else does. So that sourpuss Joe Biden because, again, Joe Biden, just like Hillary Clinton, feels very entitled to the office of the presidency feels incredibly entitled to that office. Uh, And I think, again, there are a lot of voters that see that kind of shit and they don't like it. And you can see that in the way that he kind of reacted to Obama saying that he's got to earn that endorsement. Uh, You know, so he got mad. There was a rift between the Obama and the Biden camps. Uh, he was like waiting for that, and then I guess the endor- I guess I guess Biden didn't got the endorsement from Obama uh, around the time that Bernie was winning, and he was like, "Oh shit, I better try to say something," because that was something that they were they were going to do anyway. And they made a lot of statements about you know uh, Bernie and saying like, "Oh well, if Bernie's going to run away with the election, meaning if the people really want Bernie Sanders to be the Democratic nominee for the president of the United States." The former president of the United States will step in and try to convince voters not to vote for Bernie Sanders, who objectively is the person that a lot of Americans wanted. And you can argue with me all you want, but the exit poll data basically shows that Bernie Sanders would have won far more states had the election not been rigged by the DNC against Bernie Sanders. Which is some shit that they do all the time. Uh, 
recently Obama said this. Recently Obama said this. And this is this is I'm not getting this from like you know the gray zone or something, which is a trusted news source, but I'm getting this from like corporate media, mainstream media. Business Insider has reported this, Politico has reported this. These are all corporate mainstream media outlets, right? Like that that neoliberals love to quote all the time. Politico and Business Insider have reported that just recently Obama came out and spoke out against Biden. Recently. He said, don't underestimate Joe's ability to fuck this all up. They obviously bleeped out the word, but I'm a comedian and I, you know, who gives a shit? He doesn't believe that, that, uh, you know, Joe has an intimate connection with the electorate, and I don't think he does. Tell me who, and leave a comment with this information. If you're watching this video and you're a Joe Biden supporter and you're a staunch Democrat and anything, tell me what about Joe Biden you're excited about. Not that he's going to defeat Trump. Not that he's not Donald Trump. That's not, that's not telling me what about Joe Biden you're excited about. I want to know specifically what about his campaign, his policies, his personality, are you excited about? Based on everything I've mentioned in this video, based on what people can view with their own eyes and have viewed with their own eyes, the horrible way he dealt with Tara Reid's allegations, the horrible way he dealt with uh, Charlemagne the God, his reaction to that, the shit that he says black people aren't diverse but Latino people are, like, what? Based on uh, what are you excited about with Joe Biden? Not what are you unexcited about Trump for, but what are you excited about Joe Biden? Give me a reason to vote for Joe Biden, not against Donald Trump. If you have an answer, leave a comment. If you don't, I, I mean, you know, kind of secures the answer that I don't think he really has an intimate connection with the electorate. Donald Trump does with his with his side. I don't like the guy. I'm not going to fucking vote for the guy. But the hardcore Trumpers, he's got a connection with them. There's a personality there, you know, like he wants to do a bunch of crazy stuff. There's a there's a connection between the between his electorate and him. I don't really see it with Joe Biden. I don't really see it with Joe Biden. When I was touring around the country a lot more, I never saw Biden signs. I saw a lot of Bernie signs. I saw a lot of Tulsi signs. I saw a shit ton of Yang signs and Marion Williamson signs. Every so often I'd see a Warren sign. Every so often I'd see a Mayor Pete sign. And every so often I would see a Kamala Harris sign. Never a Joe Biden sign. So what are people actually excited about when it comes to Joe Biden? Other than the fact that he's not Trump, that one doesn't count because that to me is not voting for somebody that's voting against somebody. Look, I'm divorced, right? And uh, I'm dating somebody right now. And when somebody asks me uh, what I like about my girlfriend, I can't just be like, well, she's not my ex-wife. That can't be the only fucking reason for it. Right? Like, my reasons are she's awesome, she's beautiful, she's super nice, she's super kind. We, She's super nerdy and we like to watch the same thing. I have a shit ton of fun with her when I'm around her all the time. You know? Like, she's a great cook. She makes awesome drinks. And I feel good when I'm around her. She brings me up instead of brings me down where where we have a good partnership like there's a lot of reasons why I'm with this person that's not the fact that this person is not this other person David Axelrod who is one of Obama's advisors who's the uh, guy that did that I think no 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 that's a different guy sorry David Axelrod is one of Obama's major advisors uh, said Joe Biden has a Mr. Magoo quality. These are top-tier fucking Democratic uh, 
politicians and advisors that are making fun of Joe Biden, that don't believe in Joe Biden. But they're going to push him to be the president of the United States, despite what the people really wanted. Because the guy that the people really wanted was going to fuck over their corporate donors. And Obama didn't really endorse Joe Biden until he had the nomination anyway. So we go on and Obama starts talking about, uh, what is he talking about? Concrete policies that he has. Then he like doesn't mention any of the policies that Joe Biden actually has. He starts talking about his policies. Like he starts talking about the ACA, which still left millions of people without health care. He started talking about uh, the uh, Restoration Act or something. Um, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Basically what happened after the housing crash. I'm just like, wait, you mean the time that you bailed out the banks and not the people? You you mean the time that 10 million people lost their homes? You mean the thing that we're going to repeat again but worse? You're bragging about that? (laughs) Also, what's Joe Biden's plan to take care of that? Fucking nothing. He's going to bail out the banks again. mentions the military but doesn't mention the drone war or the kill list that he had that Joe Biden was also a part of Daniel Everett Hale revealed a kill list that was part of the drone papers where's Daniel Everett Hale well thanks to Obama handing over the dictator's toolkit to Donald Trump Daniel Everett Hale is in prison right now for being a whistleblower because remember Obama hates whistleblowers And then he starts talking about how people are going to make it harder to vote because voting is so important. And he, and, he, and it's just like he pretends like the DNC didn't fuck over the electorate. What? Bro, the DNC actively fucked over Bernie Sanders' campaign, Tulsi Gabbard's campaign, Andrew Yang's campaign. Like, how are you just going to ignore that shit? How are you going to ignore election fraud from the Democrats and just say Republicans in Russia? The two the two R's that you use as a scapegoat. It's a 19-minute speech. This is a 19-minute speech. And in that 19 minutes, everybody's claiming this is an emotional... It wasn't that emotional. It's a pretty standard speech. Riddled, riddled with hypocrisy. Riddled with it. A 19 minute speech that was not emotional, riddled with hypocrisy, essentially lying to progressives, lying to everybody about the party and about the candidates. But it's good theater. It's very, very good theater. And everybody's talking about it now, right? Like pundits, comedians. I see videos popping up all over the place about, oh, Obama's emotional plea to the Democratic electorate. It's almost like they have a coordinated effort to fucking spin it to be like, it's an emotional plea. Look how emotional he's just so sad. Here's the thing that they don't think about, that none of these presidential candidates really think about, right, is um, whatever they do during their presidency is going to affect the following ones. So what happens when someone gets into office that doesn't believe the same things you do? Do you have protective measures put into place on your policies so that If someone with the exact opposite views as you do comes in and wants to dismantle certain things that provide protections and safety nets for the populace, 
is there is there some protections in place? And the answer to, to what Obama did was no. Mass surveillance, increased drone warfare, more drilling in the Arctic, more immigrant deportations, the creation of ICE, the creation of the immigrant detention centers. He figured all of that was going to go to Hillary Clinton. Two to seven wars. Two wars to seven wars. All of that would go to Hillary Clinton. Well, it didn't. It went to Donald Trump. Because because the Democrats were cocky, even though... Because they got so used to lying to the people so much and, and convincing them to be complacent and thinking, well, they are the party of morality and logic through their corporate malfeasance that it's never going to go to a Republican. And then it did. And did he come out and say anything? Hey, I fucked up. I should have been better about my surveillance. I should have been better about my increased drone war. I should have uh, put some protections in place so that, you know, more people don't die. I should have made it harder for someone to repeal things that I put into place. I goofed up. No. He just... Trump did what Trump did. Americans don't think about that. The leadership doesn't think about that. The consequences of what's going to happen when a leader is put into place that has fundamentally opposite viewpoints as you do. And and here's the reality of it. They don't. Not when they're giving to corporate donors. Not when they only care about corporations. At that point, they don't really give a shit. If that is, if, if we're not living in a de- democracy, we're living in a kleptocracy, we're living in a corporatocracy. And both parties participate in that. That's why both parties don't need to put protections in place. That's why Obama commuted Chelsea Manning's sentence instead of pardoning her. That's why it's so easy to dismantle social safety nets, but a lot harder to put into place things like taxing billionaires. Because when it comes to protecting corporations, both parties are guilty of it. Both parties will make these grand platitudinal fucking speeches filled with hypocrisy. This is like a dramatic moment in a movie. And that's really all it is. This isn't an emotional plea to vote for the Democratic Party. This isn't them saying things will be better that we're, we're going to you know, roll the clocks back and, and we are going to start moving forward and we've learned from our past mistakes under the Obama administration and we're going to listen to progressives and work with uh, the, the progressive caucuses and uh, listen to the electorate and really implement uh, things that are going to help the working class. This isn't that. This is that moment when you hear a big, great speech in a movie supposed to feel good. That's all this is. It's nothing but good theater. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, please hit the share button, and make sure you are subscribed to the channel on uh, whatever platform you're watching this on, whether you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, or Rockfin. Uh, Rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency site that is basically like Netflix for content producers. So if you like political comedy, if you like this channel, or Graham Elwood, or Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, a whole bunch of other folks that are on Rockfin, if you become a subscriber for just 10 bucks a month, you get uh, all of the premium content that all of these content producers put out there. So uh, make sure you check that out. If you want to follow me, if you want to make sure that you are keeping up to date with all the videos that I'm putting putting up the best way and easiest way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. You can uh, check out past videos there. You can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation there. You can also check out all of my stand-up comedy albums, which are available on all of the streaming platforms, all the downloading platforms. Uh, but the big way that you can 
get them is through Bandcamp. Uh, most of the albums are available for free on Bandcamp, and the, the newest album that I released is available for only one dollar, which is uh, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome in my book. So, uh, thanks again for, for watching. Thanks again to, to everybody that has subscribed, has become sustaining members, and continues to share these videos. Till the next one, we'll see you on the road.